At ease. It's your boy Soul Immortal. You know, I've been getting a lot of texts here in the last couple of days, and I, I'm, I'm noticing that a good number of them are younger men that are talking about, you know, that you know, their conversation with women. They're talking about how do I approach, how do I even just engage in normal conversation with women. You know, and a few brothers said that, you know, that that, that they aren't afraid to talk to sisters. But it seems like they have a 0% success rate. So today, brothers, I want to talk about you conversating with women and why your game sucks. Let's talk about it. So the brother that put me on game, I don't even think he's aware that he put me on game, right? So one of my best friends, man, God been knowing my entire life, right, is a brother named Lane. Now, now Lane is a happily married man now, kids, successful career, beautiful home, the whole nine. He's living the dream, right? But several years ago, Lane was a, was a single man. He was a bachelor. And, and brother, I, I've yet to meet a, another person that, that just moved around the women like this, brother, right? Long story short, I was living in Tyler, Texas. Uh, my boy Lane was living in Dallas. I hadn't seen him in a, in a good while. He hit me up one day. And he was just like, I'm coming through. I'm coming through the city. So let's, you know, let's do what we do. So I believe I, I met him at the club. I showed up about 10 minutes earlier. And I remember the minute my boy walked in the club, he had two baddies with him, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, he done, he done brought some baddies with him. So he introduced me, you know, we chopping it up, and, you know, they all, they all over the brother. I'm like, all right. So, so, you know, we chop it up for a few minutes, and we all dispersed. You know, I go to the bar, and, and again, having absolutely no game, I'm just sitting there, you know, eyeballing every woman that walks by like, like, some, like some lame brother, right? And I look over in the corner, and I see my brother, my boy Lane, you know, he, he's over there talking to another woman on the couch, just, just chopping it up, right? A whole different woman, you know? And, and, and I'm, I'm sitting there asking women, do they want drinks? You know, doing some, some old whack stuff, right? And I look up again, and I see my boy laying on the dance floor with another woman, just, just over there chilling. And I'm like, dang, my boy is, is on point, you know? And then I see one of my, 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 see my insurance agent, hot, man, she was banging. And I go up to her, and I'm talking to her, and, and we're sitting there engaging in conversation. I have no idea what I was saying. It was probably some, some dumb stuff, right? And my boy Lane comes up, you know, I'm like, hey, boom, I introduce him, and we all just sitting there chopping it up, you know, and then we all go all separate ways. And, and before she left the club, she came up to me, and she gave me the sheet of paper. I'm like, man, I'm in there. Like, I was throwing game on or something, right? And I read the paper as she's walking off, and she says, tell your, tell your buddy, you know, to call me when he gets a chance. I'm like, dang it. So when we were leaving the club, I asked my boy, I said, I said, Lane, like, I said, what do you be saying to these women, man? Because I wanted to know. I said, what, what are you saying to them? And the look he gave me was just like, like, what, what are you talking about? Like, I'm completely lost on what you asked me. I said, what are you saying to these women that, that, are, that are making them, you know, be all over you like this, man? And he said, bro, I'm just talking to them, right? So, so I took that information, man. And just ran with it, man. And, and it took me to go through several, several layers of, of finding self to really understand what that brother was saying. But uh, but today, brother, we, we're going to talk about on, on why your game sucks. Now, hands down, the first thing you need to know about, brother, is confidence. Now, what I'm not going to do is, is, is sit here and have some rudimentary conversation with you about what confidence is I mean we all know what confidence is and what confidence uh, what confidence is as far as you're you're engaging with the woman right but one thing I do want to point out is what I had to do was redefine what confidence was because see what a lot of brothers do is indirectly let women let, let women dictate their confidence and, and I'll explain right so if you go back to the 90s right see see back before you know back before the 90s you know you know the the, the cool brothers man the, the brothers that all the women wanted were the smart brothers 
were the intelligent brothers, were, were the men that could talk about you know, events in Africa and the history of our people and all this kind of stuff, right? But once gangster rap came in the early 90s or whatever, 92, 93, whatever, right, it, it changed. See, see, women started to dictate what, 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 what confidence should be, right? So women became attracted, you know, to, to uh, all of a sudden became attracted to the brothers with the low hats, to the brothers with the pants sagging, to the brothers with the gangster knights or the Cortezes, right? And all of a sudden you had just a swarm of young men all of a sudden j just become a part of that life, a part of that culture, e even if they really wouldn't buy that life because, because that's what di women had dictated, right? So, so, so you had these guys living in this pseudo-confidence you know, uh, mindset and, and, and women were attracted to them. But at the same time, the brothers that stayed true to themselves, the, the brothers that, that stayed, you know, you know, in their own, in their own mindsets, these were still the brothers getting the baddest of the baddest, right? Now, fast forward to today's time. You know, now here I am as a, a 40 plus year old man, I see the same thing, right? I see all these women saying, you know what? If a brother wants to be winning, this is what he's like. This is how he moves. He has to have, you know, this kind of thing and this kind of house, and this kind of car and blah, 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 this much money, right? So, so what do brothers do? Brothers go outside of that element. They go broke try, try, trying to live in this image just so they can be quote unquote successful or, or be a top tier guy, right? Just, just to, just to live in again in this pseudo confidence so, so, so really what they're doing is that they're, they're living this life and they're approaching women comfortably, but it's, it's, it's in a fake confidence. And again, even today, the brothers that are still true to themselves are still getting the baddest of the baddest, right? So if anything, brothers, when, you know, when I talk about being confident, being confident is not fit, you know, being comfortable because you, you fit the status quo. Be, being confident is, is knowing that is having knowledge of self uh, of knowing is knowing who you are you know I was reading a few texts man and, and guys was talking about the same thing they were like you know what I'm having a problem with women you know I'm like a 5 out of 10 you know or brothers were talking about you know what they were lacking and in my mind I'm like I, I can't identify but because I don't know when it started but a long time ago I always saw myself as a 10 I always saw myself as a top tier brother you know what I'm saying even when my money was low, even when my, you know, situation was bad, I always carried myself, you know, a as a teen. I'm a top tier brother. You know what I'm saying? And I I've never seen a woman that was out of my league. You know what I'm saying? So, so you brothers, you, you really have to start carrying yourself in that energy. You know, when you walk up in the room, you need to be carrying yourself like a god, like, like a pharaoh, man. When, when you're engaging with the woman, you don't need to be talking as if you're trying to gain some acceptance. You know, she should be glad that you're giving her your time. You know, she should be glad that you're even considering her bringing, you, bringing her in your circle, man. That has to be your mindset. So, brother, I, I'm not finna sit here and talk about confidence because we all know what it is. But it's important that we redefine it and stay true to ourselves, brothers. So, brothers, another reason why your game sucks is simply because you lack balance, right? So, so we just talked about confidence, right? Now, now, on one end of the spectrum, you can take a man that has absolutely no confidence. But on the opposite end, you have the overly aggressive brother. Now, th there's, really, there's really only one degree of separation between your, your, your overly aggressive brothers and what I call your bathwater drinkers. And when I talk about your bathwater drinkers, I'm, I'm talking about the brothers that are on, 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 on uh, Instagram and Facebook or whatever, and they're, comp they're, they're, uh, uh, they're commenting under every woman's photo, talking about how, how bad she is and, and what they want a wife or, and all this stuff. These are your bathwater drinking brothers. Now, now even though your bathwater drinking brothers and your overly aggressive brothers are completely different, you have to understand that from the eyes of a woman, they're putting off very similar energies, right? But because one brother, like your bathwater drinker, he's putting out, he's coming from a place of lack, 
But what he's displaying is a is a overly sexualized energy. And, and it's the same thing that, that the overly aggressive brother is putting out. It's if he's coming from a place of over dominance in sexuality. So, so really the energy or the aura they're putting out, and we just talked about that a few videos ago, is either I'm a smash or, or there's nothing. And I'm telling you, brother, it, it, you know, it comes down to balance because when you have that mindset, what you don't understand is you're completely cutting off the far majority of women that you would normally have access to if you have balance, right? There's an old story, and it's been a while since I heard it, right? It's talking about, it talks about the two bulls. It says two bulls walk on top of a hill, and they're looking down at all these cows, right? And the young bull says, you know what? I'm about to run down this hill, and I'm about to get one of these cows. And the old bull said, like, like, why don't you walk down and be amongst them all? You know what I'm saying? So, so what I'm saying ultimately, brothers, is every woman you come in contact with, every woman that you know, you know, you don't have to smash everything, but because that's completely, that's completely changing your aura. In other words, there's a very thin line between dominance and desperation, right? Now I, I know that 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 you know the 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 fact of you not smashing every woman that you encounter is it, completely going against what the majority of your dating coaches are going to be telling you. But but hey, I'm just telling you, man. I, I just move different than the masses, and, and I know the effect of that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I see brothers all the time. Whether I'm in Dallas, whether I'm in Chicago, Atlanta, and every once in a while I'll come across brothers and they'll say, "Hey, man, you know, I, I like watching your videos, man. Good stuff." Now, th there's one thing that that brothers won't see, right? Now, I see brothers at the airport, I see brothers at the malls, uh, but most time I see brothers when I'm out and about having having you know uh, some meals or some drinks, right? Now, there's one thing brothers won't see, and that's me hanging out with just a bunch of dudes. Because again, I, I just move different. You know, you, you, you're more likely to see me either by myself or, or just in a company of a beautiful woman. Now that beautiful woman could be somebody, if I'm dating somebody, it, it may be the, it's the person I'm dating, of course, or, or, or if I'm single like I am now, you know, it just might be a badass friend. You know what I'm saying? For example, for example, th there's a young woman that I used to date, man, in, in Phoenix. Now, now, when I talk about baddie, she's a baddie, bro. I mean, you can match her up with, with any, any of your favorite IG models, and she's going to be right there toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now, now, me and her dated for a brief second. You know, I don't know if we just stopped talking due to distance or whatever, but it just, it just evolved into a solid friendship over time, right? Now, this woman keeps me tight. You know what I'm saying? If I want to talk about... If I want to talk about real estate, if I want to talk about finances, investing, you name it, like, like this is my go-to. You know, when, when she sees me moving in a different direction, brother, she'll call me up and say, hey, you know what? I see how you know you're doing this. You should do, you know, you should move a certain way. She she really, she literally has my back. I can easily say that, that I am where I am now because of some, a lot of the influence this woman has, gave, has given me, right? And, and it comes back down to not having to smash every woman that you encounter. You know, I, I met a young lady, uh, a young sister uh, from Houston a while back, man. Sister's bad, dime piece. She's about 5'10", 5'11", thicker than train smoke. Man, me and her went out, man, for drinks one day and, and kicked it for a whole, man, several hours, damn near half a day. And, and that, that whole exchange of conversation just, just evolved into a good friendship, you know what I'm saying? She's in the computer, she's in the graphic design and web development, all this stuff. Smart sister. But, but again, j just having her in my circle of friends adds value. Again, brothers, you don't have to smash every single woman that, that you encounter. Because, because what it does, it, it alters your energy, you know what I'm saying? So when a brother is saying, when a young brother is saying, you know what, man, I'm having a problem with, with, with engaging with women. I'm having a problem with my approach. It's because that's all you know. It's either smash or dash. You know what I'm saying? That there's no balance. Once you get to a place where your energy is like, you know what, I can have a full day's conversation with a bad woman and, and not have any kind of sexual exchange. 
But I'm telling you, women, women pick up on that in a, in a whole different way. Now, when it's all said and done, it, it's simply going to come back to your game, right? Now, I, I think it's wise for young brothers to, to look at these dating coaches, right? And, and we all know who the GOATs are, right? I, I think it's good for brothers to chime into these channels because, because man, you know, these brothers are putting out valuable information to, to let you know you know, how, how, how female nature takes place or, or really what's, what's going on in the minds of women. But at the end of the day, you have to understand that you ultimately have to be true to yourself. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, the best game is really to have no game at all. In other words, if, if, you, if you're a comedian, th then be a funny brother when you approach these women. If you're a dope boy, then be a G, you know? If you're a brother that's into, you know, you know, you know, getting your finances up or into spirituality, then don't be wasting your time on these bootleg love and hip hop women. But because you have to remember what you're doing is seeing if this woman fits into your world, not you fit into hers. Eddie!